So today we're looking at joy and peace and how these can result in confidence. And um, when I was thinking a bit about this topic, I was trying really hard to think of a time that I was really joyful or really peaceful. Um, however, I found it easier to think of a time when I wasn't. So I'm gonna share that story with you. Um, I don't know if any of you guys have had a similar experience in learning to drive, but I found it quite difficult at the start. It took me about three lessons, I'd say, to figure out what the clutch did and ask the questions of why I needed to use it. Um, that doesn't bode well for the rest of my lessons. And in one particular, um, I was doing hill starts. Now, this is literally where you have to start the car on a hill. So I was on a hill coming up to the junction and all I had to do was drive and pull off and turn left at the junction, right? It's not that hard. So I probably spent about three to five minutes sat at the top of this junction. I couldn't get the car to start. Um, I partially blame my difficulties in the handbrake, which I do think is because I'm quite weak. Um, but whatever the circumstances, I couldn't do it, right? So I shouted, I can't do it. I can't do it. To which my driving instructor really helpfully replied, we don't say can't in this car. So I said, well, I'm not going to do it. Now, that probably wasn't my finest hour. Um, do with that information as you please. And I really hope that some of you have similar stories because it would make me feel a lot better. However, we have stories like this, but we also have stories of times when it was really easy to be joyful or peaceful. Maybe it was a natural response, like you're at a spa and it was really calm and you felt so peaceful or um, you found out some really good news and you were filled with joy. It's much harder to respond in a peaceful or a joyful way when things are really difficult. And this is because we often think of joy and peace as responses when really they're states of being. Joy isn't interchangeable with happiness and peace isn't the same as being calm. Paul says, I have learnt to be content whatever the circumstances. So peace and joy are fruits of the spirit. They're God-given gifts. They're to be asked for, sought after and grappled with. To really get into what it looks like to develop peace and joy in our lives, I'm going to focus on one and then the other. So with both of these, it's also, also worth noting they're gifts that we can ask for, but we also need to receive them. And this can sometimes mean actively changing our attitudes and mindsets to allow these gifts to manifest. So we're going to look at peace first. And I think that we'd all agree that one of the greatest enemies to peace is worry. Worry drains our energy and often cripples us into inaction. God says, who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life? So we get it. We shouldn't worry. But what can we do instead? Well, God invites us to turn our worries into prayers. In Philippians 4, it says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. Jesus shows us this worry into prayer in action in the Garden of Gethsemane just before he dies. So in Matthew 26, he prays, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. He's talking about his death here. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Let God's peace settle you. This peace is something that surpasses understanding. It doesn't make sense at all that Jesus could rise from prayer and be ready to face his death. When we are peaceful in times of trouble, it shouldn't make sense to those around us. What is the picture of a child of God that you are giving to the world? If you have this peace that transcends understanding, it will be noticed by others and they'll not understand it because no human can understand it. This is how they will see the fruits of God in your life. So now we'll have a quick look at joy. Um, joy in the Old Testament was often associated with worship. In the Psalms, we see this a lot. And one particular one is Psalm 100. It starts by saying, shout for joy to the Lord all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. And then in the New Testament, joy is often hand in hand with being filled with the Spirit and then resulting in boldness. So in Acts 4, 31, it says, After they prayed, the place where they were meeting was shaken 
and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God boldly. But on top of all of this, joy and rejoicing is a command. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Paul writes this from prison. Now, I don't think that I would blame him if he wasn't feeling very joyful. But this is the thing, like we said before, joy is not about circumstances. It's not like happiness, which comes as a response to something. It's an active choice to live in a spirit of joy. Joy brings glory to God and being joyful shares his glory with everybody else. When you choose to rejoice, you're saying God is enough for you. You will shine this to others. Again, what is the picture of a child of God that you are giving to the world? The Lord wants to give you these gifts. Fight for your joy. Rejoice in the Lord always. Now, with both peace and joy, for me, it comes down to trust. Have you ever been in a group project where you delegate a task to someone and you know that you're going to have to keep checking in with them? Or maybe you've asked your spouse to do something around the house and you know you're going to nag them over and over until they really do it. For me, in first year of university, we had a cleaner that came every Friday. I just want to add, the uni provided this. We didn't just decide to get a cleaner. So the cleaner came every Friday and that meant on a Thursday night we had to clean the kitchen. I had one flatmate who every single Thursday night I had to message to nag him to move his speakers out of the kitchen, to tidy up his stuff. You would think that week after week of being told this on a Thursday, he would have got the message, but alas, he did not. Um, and why do I say that? Why is that, that we have to nag people to do stuff even after we've asked them once? It's because we can't trust them to get it done. They haven't proven themselves trustworthy in their conduct before. So when we pray for peace or we pray for joy, and then we continue to sit in our worry or our being miserable, we're saying that we don't really trust God. In Nehemiah 8 and verse 10, it says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Now, I've heard this quite a few times and it kind of confuses me. How can joy be my strength? So I want to use another verse to help us understand this. And that's Exodus 14 and verse 14. And it says this, the Lord fights for you. You need only be still. The Lord fights for you. You need only be still. When I learn to give my battles to God, I lay down my weapons, I stop trying to fight, and I can be still. Out of this stillness and complete trust in God, the fruits of joy and peace have space to grow in my life. I no longer preoccupy my mind with the battle, but I turn my eyes to the victor. And this is why I think that we gain confidence when we're given the fruits of joy and peace. We're at a point in our relationship with God where we trust him enough to lay down our weapons and let him be our joy, our confidence, our steadfast rock. It's from this place that we see the manifestation of these good fruits in our lives and allow ourselves to be filled even more with the Spirit. So we know that the testing of our faith produces perseverance and it can feel really hard. But when we're given trials, it's an opportunity to grow in joy and in peace and resultingly in confidence. But this is twofold. It is a gift, so ask for it, but it's also a choice to exercise it, so do it. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus.